Good morning. Please join us in singing hymn number 499. Crown him with many crowns, number 499. This Mass is offered for a community of intentions. We pray for Grace and Andrew Mangiliano, the souls of Friar Vicente Clarvino, Frank J. Tripoli, Charles Macmillan, and this is 20th death anniversary. And we ask for a special blessing for Jennifer Tenisma. As we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for his trans transgressions of the law and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. 
But the wisdom, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconsistency or insincerity. And the fruit of the righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make, you, that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive. Because you ask wrongly to spend it on your, pa on your passions. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying. They were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the 12, and said to them, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child, such as this in my name, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, I think we have reached a record of uh, longest distance traveled 
for mass. You know, usually I have a, a chance to tell people, you know, how great it is when we have a couple that comes, the great cheese that come from Wanta. You know, on occasionally on a Sunday, they'll drive in from Wanta, Long Island. That's a pretty long drive. Sometimes people have visited us from uh, New Jersey just for the just for the day, just to be here for mass. Uh, but I think we reached uh, the, the, world, the record here. Uh, we have a group of college students who've come today to be with us at Mass uh, from the University of Applied Sciences in Constance, Germany. So you, my friends, have reached the world record. Thank you. We had a great opportunity to sit with them and meet with them, uh, young students who are uh, in very different fields, engineering, industrial engineering, environmental engineering, masters in uh, uh, business and uh, also in other aspects of, of their studies. We're really grateful that they were able to come and spend some time to hear a little bit about our community, to hear about the church here in the United States, the church here in the Diocese of Brooklyn, uh, to hear about our particular co-cathedral to learn a little bit about um, the faith lived here. So thank you guys for being here. You're always welcome. Uh, today, uh, I'm reminded of when I was in my college seminary. I may have spoken to you about this gentleman, but there was a seminarian friend, a brother of mine, seminarian brother, we would call each other brothers, you know, as, as we were seminarians, but not all of us treated each other as brothers, right? Or maybe we did treat each other as brothers, you know, uh, poking fun at each other, or giving each other a hard time. Well, one of the seminarians uh, and I just did not get along. Um, just every time I saw him, I would, I would, just, I would just get angry. <laughs> uh, it was just something about our relationship, something about just between us, that I just had a very hard time with. And I would bring it to my spiritual director. My spiritual director would hear me often say, this guy, he's such a pain, you know? I just, I don't like even seeing him in the hallway. I don't like seeing him in breakfast. I can't see him at mass, I, you know? And my spiritual director finally said to me, you know, Chris, uh, th this, this is like pretty sinful here. Your thoughts, you're harboring this. You need to bring this to confession. I said, okay, I will. He said, no, I, I mean this, like every time, any time that you have a negative thought about this guy, I want you to come to confession. Now the priest lived with us, right? My spiritual director lived down the hall from me. I don't think he realized just how serious I was about his invitation, right? He said, seriously, I want you to come knock on my door if you need, if you need to confess. Well, day after day, Father, bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been two days since my last confession. I saw him in the hallway again. Bless me, Father, I, I lost my patience with him. I just, I just, uh, you know. After a while, you start thinking to yourself, how many, how many times am I going to bring this to confession? You ever feel that way? I mean, maybe, uh, please God, uh, we're not coming to confession every day, but on if people who, we, who come to confession on a regular basis, once a week, once a, every two weeks, once a month, which is a great, great practice, you begin to hear yourself saying these same sins. Sometimes we, we kind of, if we're honest with ourselves, you know, we'll say, I'm really fighting with my patience. I'm fighting uh, to, to be more patient. And I lose my patience often. Or I, I wish, Lord, I, I feel like I confess time after time that I've been, I, I, I've been unkind or ungenerous or I've not been forgiving or, or, or more, as loving as I should be. We sort of hear ourselves saying it over and over again. And finally, after I went, like often, often knocking on the door, certainly with the grace of God, really with the grace of God, I began to realize maybe this is a me problem and not a him problem. Maybe there's something that something about me that I need to work on. With God's grace and with God's help, we're able to overcome that. Myself and, and this gentleman, we became very good friends. He ended up leaving the seminary. He's married now. He has three children. It's really awesome to see and to follow him on Facebook and just to see how how his life has continued and we keep in touch. You know, someone sent me on, on Facebook, a, a Facebook reel recently, and it's on Instagram too. It's, a, it's this sheep that's caught in a trench. 
He's like, he had like fallen into a hole. And you see these farmers, it's definitely not, ha it didn't happen here in Brooklyn, I can promise you that, right? They're, you see these farmers, they're trying to pull the sheep out of the hole. They're like three guys, like they're pulling the sheep out of the hole. No sooner does the sheep get free, he starts to prance, he starts to run. He jumps and lands back <laughs> into the trench. Sometimes I feel like that's like what we do in our spiritual life. It's like we're, we're slow to learn, we're quick to forget. We're slow to learn, we're quick to forget. It's like we think to ourselves, you know, how many times do, do I have to confess this? How many times do I have to bring this to the Lord? I feel like I'm not doing something right. Or I have like a good day or two good days and then I slip. I'm slow to learn, I'm quick to forget. Think about the disciples in the gospel today. There they are walking with Jesus, his right hand men by his side, witnessing the kind of example that Jesus is trying to present to them. An example of humility, an example of kindness, an example about servi servitude and service, sacrifice. Slow to learn, quick to forget. Are these disciples just like you and me? After witnessing Jesus' miracles, wa watching him in, in, in his teaching and, and, and listening to him about the, the greatest shall be the least and the least shall be the greatest. So this, this example of, of humility in his teaching. And what are they thinking about? What are they arguing about? They're arguing about which one of them is the greatest like a bunch of school kids. These are grown men, a bunch of school kids arguing which one is the greatest. Slow to learn, quick to forget. I think about the, the, the second reading, St. James letter, the epistle of St. James, reminding us where our truth really is. Reminding us that it's our, the fruits of our life that we will be known by. You know, realizing that we need to strive for to be more patient. We need to strive to be more kind, more peaceable, more gentle, more compliant. To try to uh, rid ourselves of jealousy, selfish ambition, because that's where disorder is. But we realize as a people of faith that this is a constant battle. We realize that as a people of faith that it's like, Yes, this Sunday I'm listening to the message of the gospel. I'm here for, at Mass today. I, for a moment I feel like all of the worries of the world have, I've, I've forgotten. I stepped into this church. Man, I really want to spend this time with my Lord. I'm giving him my hour of my day. I'm, I, I'm having this just blessed experience. And then no sooner do we leave Mass and the world hits us. Quick to forget. How many, think about how many messages, how many homilies we've heard in our, our lives. Think about, I think about myself, I said to my spiritual director recently, you know, as a priest we preach every day. I preach a homily every day. My spiritual director said, well, you know, you're lucky that it's on net TV. You can go back and listen to yourself. Why don't you go back and listen to yourself? It's on YouTube. Why don't you hear your message again? Because perhaps you need to hear it again. Slow to learn, quick to forget. The reality is that that's our, 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 our continued learning process of our faith. Today we're really blessed with the presence of our catechists who are going to receive a special blessing uh, towards the end of mass. As th these catechists are supplementary catechists they're not the full-time catechists. They, they're, they're still waiting for their paycheck. It's not coming. These are not the catechists that are, are in it for, for the salary. These are our supplementary catechists. You know why? Because who are the primary catechists? Our families. Our families are. I, I was thinking uh, today, uh, this past week, about some of the traditions that my family used to make in Sunday, coming to Sunday Mass, to make it a little bit more amenable, a little bit more enjoyable for me as a kid. 
So usually, you know, my home parish was St. Mary Winfield. It was right behind the Entenmann's factory on Queens Boulevard in Queens. So that was like the bribe. It was like, you're coming to Mass and then we're going to Entenmann's. And I could get my Entenmann's chocolate chip cookies. Or sometimes we would go to Mass in the city, St. John, uh, John Baptiste on 76th in Lexington. And I knew if we went there, then we were gonna go to the diner on, on Lexington Avenue. We were gonna eat as a family at that diner. It was always really about food. It's no wonder I wasn't ginormous. When we would go uh, uh, traveling, we would tr take a drive or a road trip on a weekend. We'd find a hotel. A spe the hotel had to have a pool in it. That was my one prerequisite. Motel with a pool, hotel with a pool. Bring my bathing suit, spend the time. But we had to find the church. It was awesome to find and to visit a new church, a church in Pennsylvania, a church in New Jersey, a church down in Tom's River, church all over the, uh, uh, wherever we were traveling in Boston, wherever we would go, like a three hour sor sort of circumference. We'd create like a tradition out of it. And I would see my parents come to mass every Sunday, every Sunday and yet still have problems, right? still have their concerns, still have their faults. I see myself offering mass every day and still falling into sin. Slow to learn, quick to forget. What a great gift it is though that we keep coming back. And the 12 step program says keep coming back, it works if you work it. So work it, you're worth it, right? Keep coming back, keep coming back, it works. Keep coming back each and every Sunday because we, we, we think at times that our, our faith is supposed to move us. There's supposed to be some sort of spirit, this emotional movement. And, and it's not always an emotional movement. It's not always an emotion-driven faith. It's, it's not meant to be that. If that helps us to start, that's great. But we have to deepen our faith. It can't just be emotion-driven. Because if you want like just powerful homilies, uh, find other Protestants, right? If you want like smoke machines and great music, again, there's other great churches that you can find those, those emotional movements. But our faith is something deeper, whether we have the music, we don't have the music, we have a homily, we don't have a homily, we have a priest that we understand, we have a priest we don't understand, he's accented, he's non-accented. Whatever it is, our faith is not in the, it's not in the emotions. Our faith is rooted in one sole purpose, Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, in that sacrament. Our faith is rooted in the, in the knowledge that every time we want in humility to come to the Lord in confession and say, you know what, God, I'm still fighting with this sin, with this temptation, with this vice, with this addiction, and I'm gonna come to confession, and, 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 and maybe somewhere deep down, I have a feeling that I'm probably gonna fall into this sin again. And I'm not gonna presume God's mercy, because that's also sinful, presuming God's, I'm not gonna presume God's mercy, I'm going to come to God humbly and say, Lord God, you know I'm like that sheep, that uh, as soon as everything starts to go right, I fall right back in. There's a reason why the Lord called us sheep. There's a reason why he used the image of sheep Slow to learn, quick to forget. Today we come to the Lord again. Again. We pray we'll be able to come again next week. And whatever it is that the Lord has revealed to us today, if it was anything, we know that we were in God's presence. We know that we've had this experience with God we know that we are changed by that experience. We may be slow to learn, but we are learning. May God bless us. United as one family of faith, we profess that which we believe, our Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and confidence, we present our needs to our Heavenly Father. encouraging the fruitfulness of those virtues around the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that all children, including those still unborn, may be valued by our society, embraced by their families, and kept safe from harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the rhetoric of vindictiveness and intolerance may be recognized as shameful and self-defeating, and that we may turn to words of reconciliation and kindness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That this autumn may bring a beautiful harvest, a season of plenty whose riches can be shared by farmers, migrant workers, food handlers, and consumers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For catechists, that through their invitation, their witness, and their instruction, they may shine the light of understanding upon those who are open to being better disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. souls of Grace and Andrew Mangiliano, Friar Vicente Claravino, Frank J. Tripoli, and Charles Macmillan, and for this special blessing upon Jennifer Tenisma, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, hear the prayers which we bring before you and answer them if they be in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We thank you always for your kindness, your generous support. Today we have a second collection in support of Catholic education. We thank you for your continued generosity.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under him, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen.
graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as our ushers take up our second collection in support of Catholic education. While our ushers take up our collection, I just want to point your attention to a few announcements. Next Sunday is the Feast of St. Michael the Archangel, a prayer that we pray every Sunday, a prayer that we pray every day here at the Co-Cathedral. We are pleased to welcome, uh, we'll see how many are able to make it, but we have uh, invited our two local precincts, the 7-7 and the 7-8 precinct to the 11 a.m. Mass. Uh, and if any officers or any police officers here, parishioners or anyone in the armed services are welcome to come for a special blessing next Sunday at the 11 a.m. Mass. So hopefully we'll have a few of our local police officers but if you yourselves, if you know someone who is, uh, and I'll certainly be offering a prayer for my brother who is uh, with the NYPD as well on next, next Sunday. We come to the feast of uh, St. Francis of Assisi, which uh, is tr traditionally observed on uh, October 4th, but that's a Friday this year. So we're going to offer a blessing of animals, a blessing of pets on October 5th. It's a Saturday at 12 noon here at the Co-Cathedral. Uh, if you come to Prospect Park on a Saturday morning, there's like a thousand dogs running around in the park. So spread the word. I don't know if we want a thousand dogs outside, uh, but we will certainly love to invite any of you who have pets, cats, turtles, snakes, whatever, lions, whatever you bring uh, would be great uh, for the blessing of pets. In this week's edition of the tablet, uh, toward the back where uh, one of the authors, one of the writers of the tablet, John Alexander, has a column called Tuned Into Faith. There's uh, an expose on our very own Santiago Gutierrez, who's one of our singers at the Music and Co-Cath Ensemble, who his composed song of a, a, a traditional Haitian song of, about our Blessed Mother Mary is actually going to be debuted at Lincoln Center. Uh, and so we're really proud of you, Santiago. Uh, we wish you the con best congratulations to you all. So he's gonna sign my copy and this will be worth a lot of money someday, I know. So uh, if in case we need to pay the bills, I can sell the copy, sell his signature. Um, Music at our CoCath, we're gearing up for a great concert series. So please find out more information about that. Uh, in the bulletin, there'll be a concert on, uh, in the weekend of, uh, in October. But on, before then, of course, our first Sunday of the month, October 6th, we will have our first Sunday at four organ concert. Uh, so October 6th at 4 p.m., a beautiful recital based on Marian themes as October is the month of the rosary the Ave Maria, the Salve Regina, all that uh, is very exciting to be heard. I hope that you can mark your calendars. Uh, we also mark our calendars for our upcoming feast day, uh, the Feast of St. Teresa of Avila. Uh, it's a little sad, I have to announce, it's a little sad that uh, after three weeks of selling tickets, we've sold about 35 tickets uh, to the brunch. Now that's really sad, actually. That's not a little sad, that's really sad. Um, I am grateful to some of the online viewers, some of those who watch us on NetTV, who have even donated four of those tickets uh, were donated uh, uh, by our, some of our online viewers. And so um, that's very sad. Uh, so we really want to push that um, this week and next week, the weeks coming. The Mass is at St. Teresa of Avila. It's on Sunday the 13th. We are inviting a bishop, the Bishop of Charleston, South Carolina, who is actually from St. Teresa of Avila Parish. Uh, he'll be celebrating that mass. We will, of course, have an 11 a.m. mass, but we're hoping that many of you just come 
sleep in an extra hour and come to St. Teresa of Avila. And after that mass, come downstairs for the brunch. And that's the brunch, that's the tickets that I'm talking about. Uh, so Nancy will be selling tickets. Uh, she's got 10 at least right now. So hopefully we can sell those 10 very quickly uh, and we'll have more tickets next week. We thank you for your support. Our parish is made up uh, not just of the priest and the deacon, but certainly by the lay faithful that support the movements of the parish. And um, this special group of people really deserve uh, our applause uh, for their assistance, for their sacrifice. I'd like to call up the catechists of our co-cathedral co parish to come forward for a special blessing. We have a number of catechists. Some are able, we're not able to make it today but Stephanie Marin, Carla Marin, Elizabeth Talapta, Teresia Menvier, Laura, Lilia, Lilla, Carlene, Brenda, Norma, Syria, Adriana, and certainly we thank Jessica Figueroa, who has been our director of religious ed for these last 10 years. our catechists who are giving of themselves each and every week to help our young faithful know and love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you to bless them in their efforts, bless them in their classes throughout this academic year. We give you thanks, God, for the blessings that we receive and certainly that we are able to give those and share those blessings with others. May these catechists be for us an example of selfless love, of sacrifice, and of giving ourselves our time and our talent, our treasure to the Lord. May God watch over you and bless you and your families today and always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. We can give them a round of applause, I'm sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for signing up, this is thank you. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Notice uh, we're missing some men, right? To stand up here and to be our catechists. Uh, it's not just ladies, it's not just a ladies job. We still need three more catechists for this upcoming year. So may this be a uh, reminder and an ex a, a hope of a call uh, for some more assistance for us. And I want just to really give thanks to J Jessica Figueroa who for the last 10 years uh, has served as the director of religious ed at St. Joseph's Church and Parish. Uh, Brenda, who had served uh, pr previously at St. Teresa of Avila. Um, but we uh, give thanks to Jessica for these 10 years of service, that this is her last year. She's celebrating her decade of service and she's now passing the baton on to the next director of religious ed, whomever the Lord chooses that may be. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, but I do want to applaud you, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Speaking of religious ed, we also give our last call for men and women who are still missing one of their sacraments of co communion, confirmation, or even all the sacraments of initiation. Please see Deacon Manuel. He is our director of our uh, order of Christian initiation for adults. So that those classes will be beginning soon, very shortly. Please stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Sorry. Together we pray, Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And we wish our dearest blessings upon the college students that are here with us. Enjoy this week of your classes and your uh, immersion into the United States in New York City. And we hope you have a safe trip back home and a great semester to come. You're always welcome back here at the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph. So tell your friends to the visiting New York, visit the Co-Cathedral. God bless you, thank you.